I was just going to do a video on gene prediction and auto annotations. Something uh, that I noticed recently when looking through some genome data. I quite like working in Excel with RAST annotations just because I find it easy to extract the information from the annotation. I was interested in looking at these genes here, so hypothetical 1 down to 7. And I noticed something as I was going through. Especially with these two here, hypothetical gene 5 and 6. I put this information into DNA Plotter just to get a figure for how the genes are arranged. You can see hypothetical gene 5 is in the opposite direction to hypothetical gene 6 here. So it's particularly these two out of that cluster that are quite interesting. And the reason is because of the start codons, especially hypothetical gene 5, you can see here, it starts with TTG. And hypothetical gene 6 starts with GTG. And there's quite a short intergenic region between the two genes. Looking at that, the predicted gene sequence from the RAST auto annotation, hypothetical 5 here, hypothetical 6 here, you can see the TTG start codon here, and TAA stop codon for hypothetical 5, the GTG start codon for 6, and the TAA stop codon for 6. So the stop codons I'm happy with, but it's the start codons, especially this one here, that I was a little bit worried about. I checked the annotations against well, an annotation that had been done with Prodigal, with a Proca annotation, so it was gene prediction Prodigal, and an annotation using Proca. And although the gene sequences aren't actually shown here, these products are from identically predicted genes as to RAS. So RAS and Prodigal have both predicted hypothetical 5 with a TTG start codon. It's interesting because the most common start codon in NICERA, which is what I was looking at, ATG is the most common start codon. GTG is present in around 10% of genes, and TTG are very rare, around 1%. So just to compare and contrast that in E. coli, the ATG occurs about 83% of the time. GTG is about 14 and TTG about 3, so fairly similar to NICERA. But overall, TTG is a very rare start codon. I was recommended to use Artemis to look at this. Artemis is a DNA sequence viewer and annotation tool that allows visualization of sequence features as well as six frame translation. I've taken a screenshot here and I'll just talk through it. Here you can see the six frame translation tracks here, three in the forward direction and three in the reverse. On here, you have hypothetical gene five and six, and these small vertical lines represent the stop codons. Just going back, you can see here for hypothetical gene 6, going this way on the plus strand, so this is the stop code on here. So in addition to these tracks in Artemis, you can actually get down here the 6 frame translation, as well as the nucleotide sequence along here. And hypothetical gene 5, you can see the overview, as I said, only shows the stop codons in this, but you can actually get the start codons up as well. If you right click on one of the genes, it'll bring up a window like this, and then you'll be able to click start codons. Here you can see the start codons are actually highlighted in this sort of purplish color here. You can see the TTG is here in this particular image. Okay, there's another potential start codon, which is here. So as I've shown there, TTG, but here is GTG. So the next one along is actually a GTG. So hopefully that'll make more sense in a minute. What I did was I snipped out of the fast day genome sequence this region. As you can see here, I've got a TAA here, so this is hypothetical gene 5. And then you've got your TTG here, GTG for hypothetical 6. And the stop codon is down here for hypothetical gene 6. So why is this important? You might be interested in looking at regulation of these genes, so they're divergent. So there could be regulatory sequences in here. So obviously accurate prediction of the genes would be quite important to be able to identify some of those regulatory sequences. Moving on, gene predictions for the cluster of interest. So overall I've shown all seven of those genes. I'm actually interested particularly in these two. When I compared across a lot of different species, I found that overall predictions for these genes are identical. So that's using RAST and Prodigal. Similarly, predictions for these are identical as well. So the only issue really, as far as I can make out, lies in the prediction of this gene here. 
hypothetical gene type. What I found was there was some variation in the start code on for this particular gene. Here I've highlighted this is actually shown the other way around as previously. So this is hypothetical gene 6 with a GTG start code on there. Here it's shown as CAC there. But when it came to predictions for hypothetical gene 5, I found that there was some variation. You can see here for the subflava, herflava, generally they were predicted with a start that was here. For some of the other species, it predicted the start to be here. But in both cases, it predicted the start codon to be TTG, which was unusual. I looked at other potential start codons in there, the most common one ATG, as well as GTG and TTG, which I've highlighted here. What I found was these weren't in frame. From this, I was gaining evidence to support this being the start codon for this gene, GTG. Looking at the alignments again with that new predicted start codon, hypothetical gene 6 and hypothetical gene 5 there. This is what it would look like with that new start codon of GTG. So I did this by multiple sequence alignment as well. And you can see there's sequence homology in this region, not so much here. But really the gene, if you align these genes with this being the start codon, there's a high amount of similarity in the sequence up until the stop codon. I haven't shown that from this point onwards. So obviously within this region highlighted grey, I'm going to look for promoters and so on. To support these predictions, I had a look at another a couple of other programs. I looked at Genmark and F genes, so it's actually F genes B, for hypothetical gene 5 and 6. And I found that these programs both predicted the new start codon of GTG, which is what I thought it was. Same for F genes B as well. And these are considered actually to be very good prediction programs. I think F genes is probably one of the best. But you can see here, start coordinate here is the same between F genes and Genmark. I was quite happy about that. Both of these you rely on hidden Markov models to predict genes, and these are considered the best. So I did a bit of investigation. Prodigal is an ab initio prediction, identifies gene coordinates, and then annotates them using something called proper, and it does that by comparison to a database. So it's possible if there's an error in the database, some of those errors can be passed down when annotating genes from a genome like the one I have. In terms of RAST, this predicts ORFs using something called Glimmer and annotates as well by comparison to database sequences. As I've put at the bottom, Genmark and FGenes B, these are both hidden Markov model based gene prediction programs and they seem to predict according to my own prediction to actually looking at the sequences and aligning them. So often gene prediction programs will just look for the longest open reading frame. So this will be the first available start codon. So that's possibly the TTG that we saw initially. And that will then go through to the next stop codon within the same reading frame. So these are generally good, but as it's put here, it's not an absolute guarantee that the prediction that you get back is going to be right. And as I put here, FGenes gave the most accurate and Genmark is the second most accurate prediction when comparative studies have been done. I was recommended a good book recently and I've just put up an image of it. I had to read through and a lot of these concepts are actually covered in chapter 12 and I thought it was very useful. So I just thought I'd bring that up if anybody struggles with this sort of thing. I was just going to do a quick start up of Artemis Genome Explorer. Open Artemis, get a few options here so you can save between sessions as well as set a working directory. I'm just going to leave this as it is. Now as you can see here, standard, that's for the genetic code that you'll be working with. In this case, you go on Options and select Bacterial. Then you want to import a GenBank file. So if you go File, Open. Now wherever you saved your GenBank file to, mine's on the desktop, so I'm going to just open that one there. And what you get is a window that looks like this. I had this in the presentation a little bit earlier. So you've got your six frame translation tracks, three on the forward, three on the reverse. If you know a gene name and it's been annotated in your genome, you can actually find it. So if you go to this tab at the top, go to Navigator. I'm quite lucky because I know roughly where it is, but go to Feature with Gene Name. Just going to put this in here. Just scroll along a little way. This here is hypothetical 5, and this is hypothetical 6. You want to zoom in on this and just right click and zoom to selection. And if you double click on that, it will then align, obviously, the top and the bottom. So I talked about before, I couldn't find any other start codons that were in this reading frame. So I'm assuming that the GTG is the correct start codon here. You've got, you've got a hypothetical gene, and there's an arrow to indicate it's actually on the plus strand. Something else here, if you right click on here, you can then include start codons. 
So if you put the start codons there, it will then bring up the start codons. Then obviously you can see if your particular protein is in frame, you can actually highlight some areas of this. If you just go on there, it will then bring up that region there and the amino acid that the uh, codon actually encodes as well. Similarly here, and as you can see here, this is your start codon here, TTG, and that lines up with that. That's just a very brief overview of how to start Artemis and include the start codons as well as the stop codons. There's an awful lot more that you can actually do with this though. But if you right click on here, you can view, select bases, base of selection as a faster. This will just then bring up your sequence here. So let's just have to get Artemis up and running. I'm hoping to do a bit more with Artemis in the future. There's all sorts of things that you can do with it. Down here you have a table. If you want to expand this, the information that's in here, you right click on here and go show gene names and show products. You can also change a lot of the values in here as well, but I'm not going to do that today. This is a few ideas. If you do struggle, yeah, there are resources out there that can help. I think this is quite a good one. This is very useful if you're annotating a genome to identify the coordinates of the gene.